We're rolling. All right, so we had a question from the Facebook group. We're in the business end of things talking about brick and mortar versus direct to consumer. In our case, e-com site direct to consumer versus brick and mortar slash retail. Um, what are the fundamental differences? And I think the question was, where do we see it going? And it's a really good question. Um, if you talk to a great retailer, they'll say that uh, doesn't matter how great direct to consumer is, people are still going to want to have that local touch point, fill the shoe, try everything on, fill the product, whether it be shoes or coolers or whatever it is. Uh, they still want to have that connective tissue, and I would agree with that. So I think there's going to be a place for local touch points always um, with products. Um, that has to do with the different types of customers. Um, so it is an interesting one to consider. Us being primarily direct to consumer. Now we do have two uh, retailers and one of them is here in Austin it's called ready to run uh, my buddy Rory Tunningly manages it and we vend a tray you out of uh, or we sell wholesale to them they have a great time doing it it's a great program um, and it does put some kind of a local presence in Austin where somebody can go try it on talk to a run specialty um, uh, sales consultant or somebody as talented as Rory or somebody on his team that would know about all the different shoes to kind of qualify a runner in a tray you versus some other brand and maybe they pick the other brand and some people pick a tray you that's pretty good information it's great knowledge uh, the other is a bike shop uh, that I used to work at and very fond of Southern Bicycle Company. They also have a running spe run specialty arm called uh, Southern Running Company, and that's in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And I really like their take on it. Uh, the proprietor, John, my good buddy, told me that as a retailer, he'd much rather buy wholesale and uh, get a lion's share of that 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 kind of margin. So anybody who's hustling would much rather pay the wholesale prices to be able to then make up for it with the retail markup. So the big elephant in the room kind of boils down to pricing. Something, uh, what's the difference between wholesale and retail? So typically if something is made for X amount of dollars, it's wholesaled for 2x, and then it's retailed for 2x the wholesale. So if it's made for 10 bucks, you sell it wholesale for 20. You can check my math on this, Joey. Uh, <laughs> and then they would sell that for 40. So the thing that's made for 10 bucks is sold to the consumer for $40. That's a, called a keystone markup, typically in retail, which is a great markup because it also accommodates for putting the sh something, putting whatever it is on sale, or put, taking that MSRP and being able to put a sale price on it after the fact. Now, what really got my attention as a direct-to-consumer brand, however, is the idea that we could crush that margin a little bit, give those savings to the customer and go from there. Now, the, there's pros and cons to that. One is the, and the customer would pay a smaller in-state cost, uh, which would be, you know, it's not a retail markup per se. It's more just like our markup. We make the shoes for X, we sell it for a sustainable amount to run and grow our company. And it doesn't have to go through the trading of a wholesale into a retail markup or an MSRP. The con though, the big glaring con, which we're fully aware of, is that as a direct-to-consumer brand, you don't have that local touch point. You don't have experts in their field talking about the product, qualifying people to check it out and stuff like that. So there, 
it, it, it does put a lot of accountability on our marketing side um, uh, on kind of how we stack up uh, with awareness and what is our social media campaigns and everything look like. So the pro is that we have, we can offer a very aggressive price and competitive price for our product in comparison to that MSRP, but we don't have a network of great retailers, whether it be a big box retailer or a small local but kick-ass retailer. Um, we just don't have either. It's kind of like, what's it called? Look at this. Operate with, you know, we just, I guess we just have a lot of accountability. So the philosophical question really boils, boils down to where it's going. And where I do think, now I'm going to insert my opinion, and this is where you can put in the comments where you think uh, you'd like to see, but it was before at TreyU that I said, digital kiosks and an affiliate deal, um, meaning that retailers wouldn't, it's going to in a proper debate, I would be on the side going, I, this is what I think it would look like in kind of a utopia or in some cases a dystopia. Because <laughs> I could see some people hating this and some people loving it. People loving it would be the brands and the suppliers. Yeah. People hating it are going to be, I think, the folks on the retail side because they get a smaller piece of the pie. So imagine you go into a store and you see um, a beautiful digital kiosk or something. Something that has um, learnable content, interactive content, maybe it, it's like try your size here or we recommend you're this size in our shoe. Um, you know, kind of an idea. Joey, can you make sure you tell me where I'm going? I think I'm going right. Yeah, I'm just going right, that way. Head right here. Um, I'm going, you dingus. People are too impatient these days. Um, what kind of car is this buffoon? It's a Prius. Love the Prius. Come on with it. So uh, you would walk into the store, and the store because Amazon Prime and all these folks have have really set the standard for quick shipping. You would walk into the store. You would talk to the pro. You would get qualified with a product. You wouldn't go home with it. You would not leave the store with that product. The store would sell it. It would go into transit into kind of like. Uh, a mass shipping, you know, protocol, and that product would be shipped to your door either that day or the next day. So instead of the store owning that bigger retail margin, they would own the affiliate spiff or that kind of they would get compensated for selling a product from the manufacturer or a brand or something. Now the brands would love this all day long because then you have essentially a street team and, you're, and you could say something like, hey, you don't have to buy back stock anymore. You don't have to have a 60 day note on all the stuff that you're buying. You don't have to do all this or that. All you have to do is just keep a size run in here or X amount of products or this product or that product in the store, let people try it. And if they want it, then we give you a um, Kind of compensation as a sales compensation spiff for selling that product and we'll sh we'll handle it from our fulfillment centers and ship it i think that's where it's going to go do i think that's good for the retailer no i do not do i think that retailers are going to stand for it probably not if they're great in on the business end of it and they just want to build an organic business because they're going to want that bigger margin, that retail margin. So ultimately where I think it's going to go is a mixture between um, almost like a, I don't know, you can probably imagine like tracking that train of thought that of course we would love that deal to pay somebody five bucks or ten bucks every time they sold a shoe and we would ask them to not even carry it, we'll ship it out but they're not gonna make, they're not gonna be entitled to the bigger share of that margin. And I think that that would hurt them. So I couldn't safely say that this is gonna be mutually perfect for everybody unless they're doing serious volume. So then it's a question of like, the more the better, right? Well, I think the more the better, 
is what's getting kind of everything into a big problem these days any anyway um, so selling the shoes at the right place at the right time to the right amount of people is always the name of the game and how do you strike that balance that cocktail and uh, I, I don't know where it's gonna go um, I do know that e-com is growing and I do know that more people are ordering at home but I also believe that people are not getting their needs met. They're not, they're not um, as tied to the community as they once were. And I don't think that they have a sense of, uh, I think that people need to be closer to ge just general, general brands and just kind of like ordering from them. So that's where we try and provide that experience to a certain extent, but I don't know. I, I, it's a very confusing one. I hope that that kind of breaks down the landscape where it's going. Uh, I think you're going to see big brands just totally invest into their own point of sales, um, their own retail stores, flagship pop-ups, selling only their brand. And um, it'd be a great idea for us if we could afford it. Put a pop-up, a tray you running shop here in Austin be one on the east coast one on the west coast big cities maybe chicago uh but that's a big it's a heavy ask on the monetary side and leasing these days like nobody wants to lease anymore because it's yeah so uh, i think we're right in the middle of it i can't safely say where i think it's gonna go but i do hope that that all makes a fair bit of sense in terms of how to kind of unpack the issue. I hope that provides some clarity on the way that I tend to think about retail uh, or brick and mortar versus um, direct to consumer. I love them both for various reasons and I think at the end of the day we'll just keep relying on great partners like Ready to Run and Southern Bicycle Company to help us grow our network and we'll just keep doing what we can on the shipping side. We're not gonna be the giants and offer same day shipping right now it's just not in the cards so we're constantly just trying to uh, maintain a beautiful system that works built off of a value system that we believe in hope other people believe in it as well that's all i got did that make any sense joey i think that answers answers the question and there's just a lot to unpack as time goes on maybe this is the part where you ask people to put their things in the, their comments in the comments yeah, of I don't course. Know. I mean, there's a lot of dialogue to engage in, so add your comments. You know, my, if I if I were to comment, I would say, why did we get so stuck on the term brick and mortar? 